We chopped up this Porsche Boxster, slapped a Ford V8 into it, and are transforming it into a 1960s inspired vintage supercar. This is Project Jigsaw. Now before we begin doing a bunch of work to this car, there's one thing that's been annoying me for a very long time, ever since we first chopped up this Boxster. We left this inner structure here, which currently is doing nothing, because we've reinforced back through here. This is just pretty much holding up the jam, and that's about it. So we're gonna cut that out. It's gonna look a lot cooler, and uh, it's unnecessary. You ready to cut? Sure. I'm always ready to cut. I like how I've been begging you to do this for months. Yes. And then you're the one doing it. Yes, I like that too. <laughs> it's okay, it's still satisfying to watch. That's weird. Wait, 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 wait. Ready? I want to have the final honors. It's my kill. Good job, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you, Cody. Looks so much cooler. Yeah, I was just looking at the other side. What's going to hold our wires once we cut that off? Uh, nothing. We don't, we don't need anything to hold the wires. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say we don't need wires. <laughs> Where we're going, we don't need wires. Oh yeah, I can, I can fix that. Oh, look. Woo, that was hard. <laughs> now it's time for round two where I exclusively cut off that side as well. I cut this off. So now that the car is running, kinda, uh, we also need to figure out how to make it shift. So we have a six-speed transmission now, we originally a five-speed. Also, our transmission is extended back at an additional five inches. However, the six-speed transmission, the shift selector is on the side of it, whereas in the five-speed, it's more towards the rear end of it. So I'm hoping that our cables will still reach. We're gonna find out. This might actually reach. However, the other thing I don't know, so like, these cables are from a five-speed car. I don't know if they're the same between five and six feet. I imagine they aren't because the length would be different. Well, the length is different, um, but I'm wondering if the ends will pop on. Yeah, well that too. Plus, I don't know which one goes where. There's a lot of questions. So what we've determined is this shift cable, which is the black one, if I mount it to the rear mount, it's about the right length for the selector here. I just have to relocate the mount slightly up higher and angle it. That's not a big deal. The big deal is this white shift cable was a little bit longer. So I'm gonna cut the zip ties to split them apart so I can route it differently. Then I have to quickly move this mount way back here so that it can reach this on the side of the transmission. And in theory, it should work. And I'm full of theories. Yes, not proven ones. Listen, what are you doing? Um, fitting up a clutch hydraulic sleeve cylinder. Reach out, don't wait. There's no more time. Call out God's way. Flood gates and skies. So right now, I'm just trying to get these things tacked in place so that the shift cables will work. Then once I know that they work correctly, I'll reinforce it. Let's see if it works. Front to back should feel pretty good now. Oh yeah. We got gears now, baby. Well, we got two gears. We need the uh, side to side motion yet from the uh, white cable. For the fun part, I gotta get this cable to move back farther. I'm gonna pop it on here. This might be hard to see, but to figure out where this needs to be when I mount it, um, this is the side-to-side -side action of the shifter. 
So if I have this fully back, right, that's fully shifted to one side. I marked it there on the uh, rod. Then here's the whole way to the other side it's marked. So now, if I center it right there, that should be center on the shifter. It should end up being correct. We'll find out. Is it pretty? No. Does it work? Yes. And that's what's important right now. It's just a mock-up. <laughs> Oops. Apparently I uh, broke this GoPro lens somehow. So this is the black cable here, which is the shorter one. It's literally the perfect length for this. Like it wraps down through, doesn't get too close to the header. We can heat wrap it, not a problem. But this is the white one and it goes way wide now. If you look at the uh, other shifter we have here for another five-speed transmission, the ends are different because of their use. This is the white cable right here, and it has a pin on the end, whereas the black cable has a ball socket. I just thought of something. I'm pretty sure that these cable ends get clipped into those sockets. Because we have a 997 one here. Yeah, and they clip in. So in theory, I should be able to pillage that black cable and fix the length problem. I'm gonna switch that quick and see what happens. Tony, I got the shift cables done. You haven't got your slave cylinder in yet. I was doing other work. Yeah, other work. Mm, Hold on, other folks. things. That's disgusting and you should not show me that ever again. I ran into an issue, which I kind of expected some kind of an issue, but I'll show you what I mean. This right here is the black cable and it's like, you know, centered right now, right? So if I line them up end to end right here, you can see the length difference between the two cables. So what we're gonna have to do is cut the end of the black cable, shorten it, weld it back on, and hopefully that doesn't cause any problems. Should be fine. This is a temporary fix, so eventually we'll get cables made, so I'm gonna go with that. So when I was in here doing the wiring, I noticed something that didn't look good. This pedal. That makes a funny noise. Yeah, brake pedals don't usually move that easily. Um, it's because it's not attached to anything. So we have new calipers, but we have no booster and master cylinder to actually work them. We removed them from this car for some other project, I think. Um, so now we got to put that back together too. It's always something, isn't it? it yeah. Um, Seems like this is a jigsaw puzzle. It, yeah, it kind of is. And we're putting all the pieces back together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What'd you break? Nothing. It's good. All right, all right. It's all good. We're all good here. <laughs> so while we're putting this back together, we're actually going to remove a component, which is the ABS pump. We don't need, well, I won't say we don't need it, um, but it is a 60 inspired supercar. And besides that, our wheels are staggered. Our wheel, rear wheel diameter is larger. And so that's going to confuse this and it's going to want to be actuating all the time. So we're going to get rid of it and stay true to form with the project itself. That's a win-win right there. Yeah, yeah. Up to the scene of the accident anyway. Right up to the scene of the accident, yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Here we go, we got side to side. Front to back. And now we don't have excess cable poking up. So that's a win. I also went ahead and put on this 997 shifter, which if you're not familiar is a newer generation 911. Um, it's just upgraded. It has some metal parts to it instead of plastic. We have a bunch of them laying around, so why not? Now remember kids, when doing something janky, 
Always cut your zip ties at a nice 45 degree angle so when Tony's working on it later, it'll scratch him. <laughs> So what's next is to figure out how to get the throttle to work on the car. This is a 98 chassis, meaning that it's drive by cable, so there's a cable that moves back and forth that is not digital, which is actually kind of nice in the situation. So this is the accelerator cable right here for the throttle, and this is the throttle and the carburetor. So we're actually kind of lucking out because this is already made to kind of wrap around this way and point right there. So what we're gonna need to do is measure the travel, figure out that same travel on the carburetor, and then make a bracket to hold the throttle cable. Figure out this model a really quick base plate to pop the throttle cable into. It'd be faster to cut that square hole out. And I used a mouse this time. Clips right in. It's gotta float this where it needs to be. I'm gonna take some rods and tack them in place to some washers. And we'll have some throttle. Important to note, we are likely not using that carburetor in the long run, so this is entirely temporary, much like, well, most everything right now, right, Tony? It's even more temporary than most things. Yeah, it's actually probably the most temporary part of this whole build. Yeah. So it's gonna be ugly. I was serious when I said it's gonna be ugly. I got this uh, zip tied here to the clevis, whatever you call it. So that, that that's not going anywhere. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I put these two washers on here. I got one here, I got one down there you can kind of see. What I wanna do is I'm gonna tack this to that washer to lock it in place. Then I can run a rod from this down to that washer to support it. It's probably questionable to tack this with a welder next to the carburetor. But... Nice flare, Tony. Why is it not part of the whole? I decided I wanted the line shorter. <laughs> so it's a practice flare. It was a practice flare. Yeah, that's it. It's a practice flare. <laughs> Tony, how yep. many pieces of flare are inside this kit? You think? Oh, probably about. 25. Bare minimum? I, yeah, I like, yeah, it's the bare minimum flare. Oh, dang it. What'd you do? I, I, put, I put the metric flare back on. Ah, oh, Tony, that's kind of <laughs> fitting. We have, you know, a metric vehicle with a standard engine. Right, yeah, so we'll put these standard pieces. It was the only T I could get locally quickly, so. That's, that's why, why. That's why we're using standard, yeah. Tony, it looks like you're making your own distillery here. Yeah, I'm definitely getting a little steampunk vibe out of these lines. Well, I think we got rid of the ABS pump. I think. You think? Yeah. <laughs> I don't see it here anymore, so that's yep. a good. <laughs> yep. That's an astute observation. Yep. Well, you know, these were both uh, six millimeter lines coming out of here to feed the ABS pump. Right now, this is knocked down um, and then splits off. If I had, if I, if I was doing it exactly the way I wanted. 
we would come in with the big line into there and then tee off. It had those big lines so it could move a lot of fluid to feed the ABS pump so that it could work and not, not get starved for fluid. Um, I didn't do it the way I initially intended, but like I said, I got some locally sourced fittings for what I needed. As my wife would say, just make it work. Cause yeah, I have a tendency to wanna make it perfect every time, all the time. And sometimes it's better to just make it work. That's what she said. <laughs> it is what she said. <laughs> shifter went way better than I expected. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it actually. It's, yeah. We can actually go into gears now. And it's a big it, deal. It, it was less work than I thought it was going to be to get there. I think we're a week or two away from driving this thing. Ooh. Yeah. 